Hello there Year 7. This week we are starting an exciting new topic, common chemical reactions and as because they are common there are some th things that you'll be able to do for this topic at home but obviously with the permission of your parent and following their safety instructions and rules as well as mine. So first of all you have got a do now on the page in front of you. There are six pictures you need to write down what they show. You don't need to copy the pictures, just write down what they show. I would suggest you number them one, two, three, four, five, six, left to right. Remember, you can pause the video here. And here are the answers. So, as we can see, the first picture here has circles all of the same type, they're all individual circles, so these are atoms of an element. Next to it, we have got two, different, two circles joined to, together. They are different colours, so they can't be the same elements, but because they are bonded, these are molecules of a compound. Beside that, we again have the two different types of circles. These are not joined, there's gaps between them, so these is, are different atoms of different elements. So it's a mixture of elements. Remember, a mixture doesn't have any chemical bonds, whereas a molecule or a compound does. Over here, we've got a mixture of some of the molecules we saw at number two and some atoms of the element that we saw in number one. Here we have a element that is in two atoms joined together such as oxygen. It's not a compound because both the parts of the molecule are the same element. So that's why it's molecules of an element not a compound. And here we have different compounds all mixed in together, not joined together, but they're separately. Make sure you've got that clear in your heads because that's really going to help with what we're doing now. So we have got four objectives today. We're going to have to know what happens in a chemical reaction. We are going to be comparing physical and chemical changes. We're going to be writing word equations for chemical reactions and we'll be applying this to real life activities and situations. Now if you want to write these objectives down you can do in which case you'll need to pause the video. Okay, so here are the features of a chemical reaction. During a chemical reaction, atoms are rearranged between elements or compounds or a mixture of those. So what you have at the beginning and what you have at the end are not the same. You make new materials. Sometimes you can see the difference, it can be observed, at other times you have to test for the difference by checking the properties of the substances. You will probably want to write these three points down because you will need to know them. Have I mentioned we'll have a quiz on Friday this week? Oh, I think I just did. Now, these are the differences between physical and chemical properties and as it says at the top, you need to learn these. That probably means you need to pause the video here to write it down. So physical properties are the state of matter. Is something a solid, a liquid or a gas at room temperature or during a practical when it's heated it might change? What is the colour of the substance? It could be, remember this could be an element or a compound. Does it have a smell? Not always safe to test. Is it able to conduct electricity? Is it magnetic or is it not magnetic? These are all physical properties. Chemical properties, things that can happen in a reaction. Is it explosive in air? We do have some elements like that. You, will see, you may have seen them demonstrated. They are called alkali earth metals. Will they burn in air? Will they rust in air? Those are chemical properties because burning, called, also called combustion, and rusting, also called oxidation, are both chemical reactions. Right, cooking. Yeah, we all know about cooking. Told you this would apply to real life activities. When food is cooked, 
atoms are rearranged, you have something new at the end compared to what you have at the beginning. We're not talking about just heating it. I know if you, you can heat chocolate and it will melt. You can heat ice and it will melt. What you have at the end with chocolate or ice is still the same as at the beginning. You're not rearranged in something, you're just changing the state of matter. So that goes back to our physical properties. But if you have a number of ingredients that you combine together, then you can have a chemical reaction when you cook. What you've got at the end differs from what you started with, and you usually can't go backwards. If you have made a cake, you cannot separate out the butter, the eggs, the shower, flour, the other ingredients at the end. Or they may try to pick out the fruit if you don't really like fruit. So cooking is an example of a chemical reaction. Now, when we write down chemical reactions, we don't want to write great long reams, so we write something called word equations. These are scientific sentences that explain how the substances change during a chemical reaction. Like any other sentence, we read from left to right and we write from left to right. On the left, you start off with the reactants. That key word is in red, you need to know that. You have an arrow to show where the change occurs, that's where the reaction happens. And on the right, you get the products. Easy to remember because products are produced. If you might get confused with those two words, slightly grim, but I use RIP, reactants in front of products. Bit silly, but it works for me. And reactants and products is something that you really need to know, and it will even still come up at GCSE. So get it now, and you will be a science genius. And I know that's all of you in the year seven in this lovely class. So let's try writing a word equation. So here we've got the sentence we start with. A mixture of flour, sugar and eggs is baked to make a delicious batch of biscuits. Try not to dribble because you've got to write this in your books or actually in your new exciting workbook on teams. Now the react first thing we do is we identify the reactants. I've already coloured them in red to make it easy if you just bought, remember reactants in front of products. Then you identify what we make, the products. That'll be at the end of this sentence. It's not always, but this is a nice easy starter. Write an equation remembering your arrow. You've got flour plus sugar plus eggs, then an arrow to show the reaction, and biscuits. It doesn't matter whether you write flour plus sugar plus eggs or sugar plus eggs plus flour. It's like addition. You can put them in any order and you'll still get the same answer. Sometimes you get more than one product, and it doesn't matter what order the products go, providing they're there. So, make sure you've written that down. Pause the video while you do it. Right, here's your turn. I've got the question on the right view. Hydrogen and oxygen react together to form water. I've got your checklist, your steps to success, on the left. You may well want to write your steps for success in your book somewhere clearly so that you can use that every time because you're going to have several practices here. And remember you need to pause the video while you do this. Now you could have two different sentences here. You might have hydrogen plus oxygen with an arrow to show the direction of change water, where hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants, and water is the product. Or, you'd still be right if you had oxygen plus hydrogen. Remember I said it doesn't matter which way around they go. Still an arrow, still water. If you've got either of those, you're great, you're ready to move on. If you're not, go back and check where you went wrong. Here comes some more practice for you now. You have got three questions to do on your own. Remember, for each of them, identify your reactants. Then put those on the left-hand side with a plus, put your arrow to show the direction of change, and your product on the right. That's your checklist. You should already have. Now you've got three questions here, so you are going to want to pause the video while you do them. Oh, by the way, I'm not putting the answers on here because that's what I'm going to check in your workbooks. Sorry, guys. 
Now, here's a weird science fact, always good to get a weird science fact. The most common elements in compounds are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, fluorine. Now, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen, we probably already knew. Nitrogen and fluorine, probably a bit more of a surprise. 2005, a group of scientists estimated there were 18 billion stable compounds made from that included these five elements. There can be in any order. There could be something like H2O, water. There could be something like C6, H12, O6, glucose, which you already know from photosynthesis. Uh, actually, then they later realised they'd made a mistake in their work and they should have said 18,000 billion. So they were a thousand times more than they thought, which shows you if very experienced scientists working together can make a mistake, then it's very important we check our work because we can make some mistakes as well, because we're not quite as practiced as they are. Now, a little bit of fun here. There's a video here which shows three chemical reactions involving eggs. I've given you a video because I know that some people are finding eggs rather hard to find at the moment. If you would like to try any of these at home, you can, should not do it without checking with your adult first. You may need safety goggles, you will need permission to use food. But these are very interesting videos, including how to make the famous green eggs. You may not like green eggs and ham, you may not like them Sam I am, but they are in this video. And finally, your activity to do at home this week. See if you can find five changes involving food. That does not include eating it. They can be physical changes such as melting chocolate, melting ice, whatever. No new substance, they can, and they can be reversed, or it can be a chemical change such as frying an egg or baking a cake. If you've got a carer willing to work with you, could you cook a recipe yourself, then write the chemical equation for what you did? You are very welcome to send photos of your cookery work at home. I don't think I'm going to be able to get any samples sent to me, but let's see how creative we can be. I hope you enjoy this activity and stay safe. Don't forget, all of this will be on Teams this week, as well as the periodic table, and you can actually write your work into the Teams notebook then you won't have to worry about sending it to me. Any questions, of course, you can get hold of me on Teams on the posts section. If you put it into posts, everyone can see it, or you can send me an email. Take care, stay safe.